Before I explain my way of outlining changes, I just wanted to go over why anyone would want to do so in the first place. I've seen people teach how to outline changes under the idea that the whole point is so you can let the audience know that you know what you're doing. That doesn't seem like a really big deal to me. It reminds me sometimes at a jam when someone's taking like a great solo, you know, mainly pentatonic, and then just inserts jazz lick. Some people go, ooh, like they just saw a firework. And then the solo continues on in pentatonic land. I certainly have things like that, even in my recorded history. And at best, those moments, I, I can show them to another guitar player and they might go, cool. But that's it. The moments that make it on the resume, for instance, are more emotionally impactful, more musical, whether or not they're clever. So if your inner music critic is going, mm, your solo could be smarter, don't really pay too much attention to it. It's not actually listening to the music. But if your inner music lover is saying, I really love the sound of blank player or blank music, and a key part of that kind of playing is outlining changes, then you have a reason to do so. If you like this video, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe. And here we go. One of the first ways not to sound completely pentatonic is just to mind your thirds. Over in A blues, for instance, F sharp and G sharp are gonna be your major thirds on your four and five chord. Now you could land like a gymnast spotting their landing and just smash that third. And it sounds something like this. <laughs> That certainly works and is essentially just kind of adding those target notes to an A minor pentatonic. I may recommend some more melodic ideas, keeping in mind, in this case, E major pentatonic and D major pentatonic. As the chord progressions get more complicated, just minding your thirds isn't going to be enough. Take the progression 1, 6 major, 2 major, 5. Just adding the third of those new chords to an A major pentatonic might lead to some bluesy options, some bluesy ideas, and it might also lead to some pitfalls if used incorrectly. A slightly simpler approach would be just to play the major or minor pentatonic that goes along with each chord. You can really hear the chords change even if I'm just playing up and down the pentatonics associated with those chords. <laughs> This of course does take a knowledge of the five pentatonic boxes all around the neck in any key. It's much more doable than it sounds, uh, especially because the guitar is so pattern friendly. If you just add the third of any new chord to the A major scale, you might run into some problems on a chord like D minor, for instance. Just simply adding the F to an A major pentatonic will leave you with this, which sounds a bit adventurous over a D minor. This kind of thing is why I'd say if you match the pentatonic to whatever chord, you'll be able to escape most pitfalls. So in the end, it's not really about not playing pentatonic. It's more about not playing just one pentatonic. This isn't all the information you'll need to outline chord changes, but it is a really good start to giving yourself some more options when you're soloing, as well as increase your fretboard knowledge. So I hope all that helps and it gives you some fun stuff to work on. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next week.